Well, then Isaiah 54, the verse after the one where the barren woman is singing and rejoicing, which is us, because there's no way we could do that. There's no way we can reach the impossible. Now all of a sudden we find there's a new covenant. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. God himself is our counselor. Now all of a sudden we realize the supernatural strategies, God doesn't add, he multiplies. We can tap into that supernatural, just as Isaac showed up, which it was impossible in the flesh, your promise can show up. In Isaiah 54, the second verse is where God caught me and taught me back in 2009 when we were in a financial crunch where we then read about the, the laws of the kingdom. Enlarge the place of your tent, the law of dominion, the place of your tent. Stretch your vision, get your vision out there, bigger. Stretch your tent curtains wide, the law of capacity. This is how you live each day. Change your processes to enable you to handle more capacity is what it's saying. So if you stretch your vision, you've got to be able to stretch your processes to handle the increased territory. Is that right? Follow me? And he said, the law of capacity. The law of capacity, when you are, your capacity is locked, you're done. People that have maxed, I mean, most people's lives are already maxed out, by the way. They're not looking for new ideas. They're trying to keep up with the old ones. And so for you to say, God, give me this or give me this, show me this. Can you handle that? Can you handle the change of processes that must take place for you to enact the ability to occupy what you've asked for? Follow me? So you have to occupy it. You can have the title deed and not occupy it, have no benefit of it. When, God, when you're asking, I'd like to have a bigger house. Well, okay, a bigger house. You got more property taxes. You got more utility bills. You got more cleaning. Okay, you got to change your processes to handle that bigger dominion. The law of dominion. God is saying, look, this follows what we just read. Where the baby, you know, shout for joy. You're going to have more kids. What's he saying? This is a new covenant. You better prepare for increase. There is increase coming and you better stretch your dominion. This new increase is coming not by your flesh, but by the spirit of God. And God is going to show you your future and you be able to walk into it. You've got to see farther and bigger and longer. And when you see bigger, you've got to be able to set the processes in place to enlarge your capacity. If that means hiring employees, buying a new computer program, whatever it is, you've got to change your ability to handle the weight of that greater dominion. All right? So you can occupy it. So enlarge the place of your tent. Raise your eyes up. See the vision. You have a new covenant. It's not tied to how fast you run now. Quit trying to filter things through your ability. Stop it. God is saying this year, listen, you have got to, we have got to think in terms of the spirit of God working with us, not ourselves. We've got to stop judging our potential by our past and who we think we are. We need to let God define who we are and let his spirit show us how to get it done. So in large, we got this new covenant. It's not tied to our own labor. Well, how big will you think if that's the case? Well, wait a minute now, let me think this out now. All right? Yes, there's work. There's some chaos in that. Change always brings chaos. Change is a little unsettling, right? But nevertheless, increase your vision. Number two, the law of capacity. Stretch your tent curtains wide, your capacity to handle more. And don't hold back. I love that phrase, don't hold back. He's saying, Look, listen, 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 listen. You have this new covenant, don't hold back. You're not thinking big enough. Think bigger. No, no, think bigger. No, no, think bigger. No, think bigger. Right? That's what it says. Lengthen your cords. Those cords hold the operation inside your capacity to your vision, which is your dominion, your ground, your vision. Those cords are the, the law of administration. I call it the law of occupation. Give you the facts, the ROI. You have to have facts to judge if your processes are adequate enough to catch your goals, your vision, right? Come on, help me out. You got to know where you're at, if you're getting there or not. And so these cords hold the weight of an increased tent size, more wind against it, more weight. They hold it. 
You got to lengthen to get the leverage to hold that process in place. You got to have greater administration. I know those pesky little details to handle the greater capacity that you're asking for. Then it goes, this is the scripture. That, this is just after he said you have an unlimited potential, right? It's the next verse. Strengthen your stakes. Let me just paraphrase. Don't quit. Paraphrase. Don't quit. There's going to be some extra weight coming against those stakes that you've staked into your vision. There's going to be a lot of changes taking place, but you do not let go of the ground, your vision, your inheritance. You hold that, and instead you believe God to help you change the processes so you can actually occupy it. Don't let go. Don't let pressure tempt you to give up on your vision. Don't allow pressure to dictate your future, right? So Joshua led the nation out of, Israel, uh, out of Egypt, of course. And in the first chapter of Joshua, God is saying this. I believe he's saying it to us as well. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land, promise, inheritance, I'm about to give to you. Get ready to cross the river. There is some preparation. Get ready to receive this promised land. Get ready to step in there. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. And it goes on there. But he gave them the outline of the territory. That's the promise. But notice they could not enjoy the promise unless they set their foot on it. I will give you all the land you set your foot on, but your territory is defined here. Here's the promise. How much of that territory do you want to take? Until your foot touches it, it doesn't change jurisdiction. The enemy still has a legal claim to it. Are you following me? But here's the promise. You decide... I will give you any place and every place you set your foot to it. In other words, you set your foot and you occupy it. That's yours. Well, Israel never made it. They never captured that territory. To this day, they've never occupied the entire territory that was outlined in that scripture, ever. Some people say, well, maybe during the millennium that'll happen, but they've never occupied it. Joshua 13, 1 says this, when Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, you are now very old and there are still very large areas of land to be taken. Now I believe he's speaking to us as well. They never took it. The promises are still yours, but are you taking them? Are you stepping into them? Why didn't they take it? Again, we read this at church, and I just felt we had to cover it again tonight. You have to be reminded of the word. Joshua chapter 17, verse 12. This is speaking of one tribe. Remember, they're giving an inheritance. Remember, they gave each tribe an inheritance of land. The Massonites were not able to occupy these towns. For the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. Well, who cares what the Canaanites say? <laughs> yeah, I think the devil's going to bow down and just say, oh, oh you're here. I'm out of here. Oh, no. Who cares what the Canaanites say? The Canaanites are determined to stand against you? Well, what did you expect? Well, I thought when God gave us that business idea, it'd just be amazing. We'd be millionaires in two days. God always speaks of the end, not the beginning. Always. He always speaks of the end, not the beginning. Why? So you'll pay the price of getting there. 
So the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph, now Manasseh, was Joseph's oldest son. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for our inheritance? We are a numerous people and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. And Joshua wisely said, if you're so numerous and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small, let me get it here. Then go up into the forest, clear land for yourselves. There in the land of the Perizzites and Raphaites, the people of Joseph replied, the hill country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who live in the plain have iron chariots, both those in Bethshan and its settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manassas, you are numerous, very powerful. You will have not only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it. As far as limits will be yours, though the Canaanites have iron chariots, though they are strong, you can drive them out. He called their bluff. Oh, you, you want more land. What they said, they want more land with no Canaanites. <laughs> they want more land without having to clear it. No, that's yours, go take it. That's yours, go take it. He called their bluff. So what happened is they compromised and what happened to that is they corrupted their own culture because the Canaanites brought their gods with them. They lived with them, corrupted their family life, intermarried, and they now live with regret. I wish we would have taken the property, the promise that God said is ours, but no, we decided to hang back. As I said this morning, we decided to say no we don't, want to, we don't want to believe you for that strength to take the Canaanites out. They're determined to stay here, God. You know that. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I thought it said, though, as I was with Moses, I'm with you, and no one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Who told you that you couldn't take the Canaanites? They did. <laughs> they did. Folks, we can't think in the term of the ordinary way. We have to know who we are. We have to know who we are. We have to get rid of this religious thinking that I have to earn, that I have to, you know, if you feel guilty, you're in, just, if you feel guilty before God, you're in the, you're in the law. That's a fact. Well, how do I fix that? reading what God says about you, meditating on it, get your mind transformed. It's hard to face giants when you think God's against you, right? Hmm? But when you know what he has said about you, who you are, you carry his anointing, his glory, his authority, and a demon pops his head up, bring it on. The Bible says run from you in terror. Folks, the reason I said that is there is a world out there that needs people that know the truth. Yes. Know how to cast demons out. Yes. Know how to handle demons. Know how to handle lies. Know the truth to cast imaginations down and set the captive free. Know how to not be afraid walking into the den of thieves into Satan's territory where you can tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you and deliver the captives. This is that hour. This is not the hour for the weak-minded. This is the hour of those that are called by the God, anointed by God, that are born in this generation for this generation to deliver this generation from the hands of the enemy and the lies that has been, been fed to this generation about who God is. That's you. I mean, God sent an angel. He keeps reminding Gary. Gary, this is not an option play. You need to be more intentional. But God, I'm busy. With what? <laughs> With what? Something more important than I have given you to do? He doesn't care if you have fun, of course, enjoy life. But your thoughts should always be about hearing God and being on assignment. I've got to finish my assignment. 
You've got to finish your assignment. Time is short. Warp speed. God says, okay, you're going to have to go faster and you can run. That's why it says run as fast as you can. And when you can't go any further, I will strengthen you. That's what we just talked about. It's not by your strength. He's trying to get that across. Let me run through you and with you. Be my vessel to reach this generation. Got to think different. Let the Holy Spirit give you his wisdom. Let's get the job done. Let's enjoy the kingdom. Let's not leave any territory untaken. Let's not be a Manasseh tribe who's living with the Canaanites. Let's determine that we're going to receive the promises of God. He's given it to us, it's ours. And we're gonna step in there and stand our ground and take it. You say, well, I'm not strong enough. Well, that's where you're wrong. You are.